Welcome to 8-Minute Crimes. These full interrogation videos are obviously longer than 8 minutes, but we wanted people to have access to the interrogations along with our full case breakdown that is in the description below. We put out multiple videos each week that consist of case breakdowns, interrogation highlights, and full interrogations just like this. So if that is your sort of thing, we would love to have you as a subscriber. That being said, the best thing you can do to support this channel is to like and subscribe. We have a lot more coming. Now enough rambling, let's get into it. So we're saying, we're ready to pop. I got you. Now listen to me. This is Van Jackson. Van is with Lee County. Okay. okay this is this is Mike. I mean, this is uh, Tom Franklin. Tom is with us here at the Sheriff's Office. Um, so what we're going to do is we're simply going to kind of walk back through the events. I will start from the very beginning and tell you everything from day, day one. one. So I'm going to be straight over. You're going to do what now? I'm going to tell you from the very beginning until all the way to last night. Okay. I'm going to tell you everything. Well, you know, the shit that I did and everything else, I'm going to be straight Well, you got to. If you don't. But if you're with Lee County, yeah, I'm, with I'm going to be able to help me a little bit on uh, the shit up there. Yeah, we're going to work with you. Know, and you're going to be able to help me out. That's right. Listen to me. I'm going to, we both will go to bat for you with our DA. But listen to what I'm telling you, Jim. Understand that Van nor I are district attorneys or judges. We don't have the final say they do, okay? Just understand that so you don't think that I'm trying to buffalo you. I'm going to go to bat for you. I've worked with Van for years. He's going to go to bat for you, okay? Before I start, I really got to tell you something, though. Okay. On the guy with Butch, that man will have me killed in this jail. I'm going to be straight up with y'all. He'll have me killed in here. And I know this. What are you about? Butch, the guy that's still alive. Right. He'll kill me. He'll, he'll, I know for a fact I'll be dead when I go over here within two weeks. The guy with Lee County, when I'm going to come straight up tell y'all everything about that, new people in Marlboro Navy. I'm more or less dead anyways from right now with one picture of the TV. I'm a dead man anyways. Because his, his son, big time monster, Terry Rackler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, sure we'll, 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 we'll get into all that just a second, okay? All right. Uh, just a second. Where, how far did you go in school? Ninth grade, and I went and got my GED from CDCC. Okay. This is the written of what I told you earlier, okay? And that says you completed the ninth grade and got your GED at CBCC, so you can read and write. Tri-County bond. Right. And he got you out on bond right. without you paying anything. Right. 
my sister only paid 200 bucks, and my mother-in-law has her house up for it. But she had name but $20,000 of the value of her house. Okay. All right. Anyways. Okay. So I'm trying to do good when I first get out. I'm doing construction framing and stuff. But I'm paying my lawyer and my uh, bad check I had in Columbus. I wasn't able to pay my crew. All right? And it had been like maybe three months I went down the road. And uh, he come up to me and all. He's like, Jesus, I need mean, you to start paying. He says, if you don't, I'm going to have to lock you back up. I says, man, look, I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can right now. He says, well, he says, if I work something other up, something other, you make you some money on. He says, I'll come and get you in Michigan too. If you can like it, we'll do it. So, well. So he mean, comes to you, tells you you got to pay him. Or he's going to lock you up. Right. And you say, okay, I'm doing the best I can. Exactly. And, and then he says, well, he's going to think of something for you to make money, and he'll come get you, tell you what it is. If you like it, y'all can do it. Right. Okay. All right. So, my another, he kind of just come by the house every once in a while, still fill me out a little bit for about a couple, two, three weeks, really. Coming back to the house off and on a lot. And, uh, I got in an argument with Kay, my fiance's mother, and I had to lose my camper that I was staying in behind the house with. Her. Well, that left me with no place to go. He let me stay in his office over there across from the courthouse at the money company in the back. Well, I stayed there for a little bit, and uh, I was about to lose my old lady because we were so down and out, and he'd given me five or ten dollars a day just to make it. All right, and he comes up. He says, I want you to ride with me. I said, okay. You get in the car and we ride, you know, just a little bit of small talk. He was more or less like, you ready to make some money? So where are y'all riding? Uh, in his Crown Vic. And we just wasn't just driving in the city area. Right, right. You know, he, I guess he felt safe in his car to talk. And uh, we got in his car, we drive around. He started to say, so you ready to make money? But I just got to tell him, but I feel like she's about to leave. Mm-hmm. I mean, I said, you know, well, I saw that for you. And uh, you mentioned building over life. Uh, uh, I don't even remember what the real the first name in relation is, but I just knew. Oh. So what did he say? He said, well, I, he was mentioning it about, well, where can we get a lot of money? And he says, well, we'll just bust up in there and just some ski mass. Just hold it down. We'll just take the money. Okay. I'm like, well, I was like, I got to think about that, man. So that shit scared me. You because know, I knew the people and I knew what it, what it was about and what it got caught. You know, so, so who brought up their names? Who brought up them? You or him? Okay, so when he asked you who had money, you said... Well, because see, I worked for the people and I worked for the life of them. Okay. I worked for the man when I was reporting cars. The old man or the son? The son, Terry and Bob. Terry, okay. Okay, and uh, anyways, okay. Seen the house and all, but come by and looked at it, you know. <clears throat> and uh, when we got to get looking at it, we made it to the dark. Okay. When we got dark, see, this is that other guy I was also telling you about, James. James. Okay, see, he involved in the moment now when I started mentioning the place. He went and got him. And when we got him, we all, it was more or less like a little old crew or a little team we had going at that, on that day. And uh, we looked at the place, filled it out. He washed his car up real good. He went and got us our little, little bargains that we didn't wind up using at all for some fucking reason. He told us not to. And uh, he wound up getting us the guns. You know, How many guns? It was two. It was a tape nine and uh, just a regular nine. I don't, I don't know what kind of nine it was. It's just a semi auto. And uh, just a little small. Who had them? Uh, Mike handed it to me. And you had which one? I had the, uh, the little one. The little regular 9 millimeter. Right. Who had the Tech 9? That's the black guy, James. Well, where did it come from? Uh, from Mike? You don't know. Yeah, both of them was coming from Mike. Yeah, okay. So I was mentioning it to him and shit, and I was telling him about what type of people it was. Was both 9 millimeter? Yeah. Or was one a different caliber? No, both of them were not sure? I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you, but... They look like both nines to me, you know. I thought they were both nines. Okay. All right. And uh, anyways, we're looking at the place, going by, checking it out, though. And uh, before all that, he really took us to a storage unit over there on Pierce Road. Okay. 
We got to clean it out. We got to pull up the blazer that he has, that little red blazer that he's got. Mm -hmm. We pulled it up in the garage there. And uh, cause we had to clean it out. When we pulled up the truck in there, me and black boy James had to wait for Mike to come back. What Mike was doing was buying gloves. He was getting masks. He was getting, uh, 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 he had to go get the air and go out what it was. And uh, when he come back, we was all getting it all ready and everything. And uh, he was telling us how to do it. You know, watch out for hair falling off, you know, get your good bath first. Wear your long sleeve shirts, he said, you know, do all the DNA tests, you know, they'll suck up the carpet from off the floor, you know, find out everything. He said, be real careful what you do. He's like, wear you some shoes you don't usually wear. He said, I know we put footprints and all that, figuring out, trying to find your shoes and match it up to the prints in the dirt. Mike here. Mike's telling you all this, you know, he's trying to figure And James. Out. And James. Okay, and uh, bro, you know, Mike's went by going back and forth, you know, checking out the place. And this is part of what I'm still talking about. When we got up there, uh, we had to keep waiting for the cars to come by. And there weren't no cars when people pull up because he used his Crown Victoria to do it because he's feeling sick because he got a cage in the back of the bucket and shit, you know. And uh, he pulls up and he stops him behind that old. old Cement store, you know that little place where on the side of it, he pulls in the back side of it. You know, the deal on the first of it, he was coming too. And now all of a sudden, the car can't be left there, it'll be seen. Somebody has to leave in the car, you know. And uh, so he, he lets he makes us get out, gives us a walkie talkie, he's got one too. And uh, two clicks for his trouble, and uh, one click for trouble, two clicks for him to come back to get us. So he drove off. He he got he let us he gave us and handed us back the guns and shit because he I guess he didn't want us to hold him in the car. You know, both of them just got out of jail not long ago. And uh, he handed them back to us. He's like, all right, y'all. He said, we give you two clicks. We'll come back and get y'all right here at this spot. And we asked him what the problem was. Why didn't he come with us? He's talking, you know, that he didn't want to leave the car. It's his car, you know. And uh, so we go in. No, we, we didn't have no choice. There was no backing out of it once we did all that. Were y'all on anything, Jimmy? Were y'all smoking dope, drinking? He scared for real. I was not on, you know, I wasn't. No. I ain't on no long crack, no crack. Okay. None of that, you know, I do like to smoke weed. That's what I did. Okay. What about James? James, all I know is that he sells coke. And I know he does me. That's it. Okay. All right. And um, we go in there, you know. Keep the door down, you know, do our little thing there, get the money from the place, and uh, we leave, click it, he comes back, picks us up, pops his well, trunk. Back up. What happened inside? You all two go in. Yeah. How do you get in? The back door. Did you kick it in? Did they come to the back door? No, see what I did. We got it to the back of the place. He cut the phone line. Okay. Yeah. I cut the phone line. As soon as we went up to the door, we opened up the screen door and we kicked the door. The wood door? Yeah, the wood door. He pulled back the glass screen door before I kicked the wood door. And when I kicked it, we automatically just rushed up in there. Did you have a mask on? No. Did James? No. Gloves? No. You were wearing gloves? No. Okay. And, uh, Go in there, you know, get him down on the ground. He didn't tell us where the money is. And, uh, right before it. Where did they come from? They were in the living room. They were both in the living room, watching TV, reading a book. What were they doing? Watching TV, believe it. You know, when I keep the door, they just, you know, didn't dash this car until I actually got what they were doing. Okay. But, uh, we got up in there. We both got on the ground. Hysterical as they were. Uh, I keep having nightmares. That's why she was mad. I like constantly trying to get shit from there. Uh -huh. And uh, got them on the ground, was asking where the money was. They told us that it was in the back. He says, I'm going to watch you here. You can't come out of the back. You can walk back there where it is. Well, hold on. The old man says it's in the back. 
Y'all are asking where the money is. Oh, man, in the womb at the same time. I said it's in the Both of them said it's in the back. So then James says, I'll stay here with him. You take her in the back and get the money. Right. He shoots the dude. He tried to shoot the dude in the ass. He hit him in the fucking right here. And then? Yeah. Why? Because that wasn't what was supposed to have been there. Or that's what wasn't supposed to have been there? What it was told it was supposed to have been safe. It wasn't safe. Was but he safe. shot him after you came back up? No, he shot him whenever he was asking where the money was. They said, it's just, you know, they said, what money, what we got is in the back. Boom. Shot He shot him. Right. He tried to shoot him in the ass, but he got him in the back. Okay. Got him back in the kidney. One shot. Right, right there. All right. And uh, so I get the bitch, the woman up. <laughs> And uh, take her in the back. When we take her in the back, and I ask her to wear the money, and she knows she's about to give it to me. And as soon as she reaches down to get it, she tries to grab a hoop of revolver out from there and swing it around on me. You know, but she almost fucking shot my head off. Did she fire? No, she didn't fire. Well, when she come around, she was pulling the hammer back, and I grabbed it and knocked it out of the way. And when I did, I shot her. And, um, uh, where did you shoot her? Right here in the sabo. Because that's the only thing I could get because I was fighting with her. And then I had to, you know, get her off of Because she was trying her best to fucking pull that hammer back and shoot me with that revolver. And uh, I shot her with that. And all, all she tried to do was switch arms on me. And we were trying to shoot me again. You know, was, so she was still holding the revolver. Right, she was okay. still holding me. You know, like, God. Damn, you know, I didn't, I did not want to kill him. Right. You know, the whole plan is what he had planned out from us for fucking three to four days straight. He said, you go in there with your pass. That way you can just leave him alive and just get what you want. Right. Well, when we're getting ready for it, he's like, y'all need just need y'all some ass care. It's dark. Well, it's fucking dark in the house, you know? And you gotta have some light to see. And uh, so anyways, he was like, well, he says, if you have to kill him, kill him. He says, y'all make y'all's choice. He says, really, I, if you, since y'all tell me that it's more or less mom related, and I kind of heard about it too, he said, it's mom. He said, I ain't got to worry about it. I ain't got to worry about coming to me and I'll say, give me a So we in there, you know, we're, we got the money and everything. He was looking at us. back up. You and her are still struggling. Yes. She still has a gun. You've shot her one time. Right. What happens after that? Okay, You're right. still in the bedroom. Right. So I shot her in that elbow there, and uh, she tried to switch around and use the other arm. I shot her in the knee. So we just look quick, you know. So then you shot her in the knee when she tried to switch hands with the gun. Right. And she went down onto the ground and just stayed there. Okay. You know, and I was like, look. Why don't you just fucking quit? That's all I want. She's still holding the gun? Did you, you know, get the gun? I got the gun before she went to the ground. Okay. And uh, I got the gun. I threw it on the bed, you know. And uh, she's laying on the ground. And I got the money. You know, I was mm-hmm. looking at it. And James come back in. And he said, what would you get? I handed it to him, you know, before he could go on off and, you know, just hold it. Because I had to, you know, grab that gun and put it back, you know, from the bed this time instead of where it really was. And, uh, so you put the gun under the mattress? Um, yeah, not under the mattress, but under the bed itself. No, under it's the bed on the floor? On the floor, yeah. Okay, you put the, a little 38 revolver? Uh, now nah, I really don't know what kind of thing it was. It's no original revolver. Okay. And, uh, what was that? Oh, okay. You handed right. the money to... Yeah, when I handed him the money to it, and um, he was like, well, all right. He started fumbling around the house for more see if they didn't have money. He says, well, there's nothing else here. He says, I'm going to want you to kill her. He says, if I got my shit, she can mess with me. You know, that's not a very close person. You know? Yeah. All right, if I went up eventually when I was doing it, and he was just sitting there and fuck, oh, yeah, I'm going to fucking do it, motherfucker, do it. And right, once I did, you know, he walked in there and he popped up. The dude that was in the living room laying on the floor. So you popped her where? Uh, I popped her in the head. You shot her in the head. Back of the head, front of the head. That's okay. You're getting it off your chest. 
I just throw them away. Story short, you know, just, I ain't no fucking dope here, you know, 
fucking lost out on my ass big time in life, you know. It was the first time I ever tried it, and it did not work for me, you know, and uh, I just couldn't. So you didn't make any money? I didn't make no money. I just wound up losing all that fucking money and shit, really, you know. And, uh, well, let me ask you this. When y'all left and you put the guns and stuff in the trunk, what happened to the guns? Mike said he'd take care of them. Mike said he'd take care of both guns. You never saw what happened to the guns. I did see what happened to him. What he did, he went to his house in the Grange on Park Street. I went up there, took him into the house, drilled out the barrels with uh, some kind of a little drill bit, you know, for forensic for him to pick it up or whatever. He straight, he tore down the tank, you know, stripped it out, rubbing rub alcohol all over him and stuff, you know. And uh, he's mostly disassembled them all and cleaned them up. I don't know where he dropped them off at, I, 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 for real, I don't know, because I didn't, I wasn't there for that part, because I had to leave. It'd be with my woman where she wouldn't be mad at him for being gone. Was and, this the same day? No, actually, when he did that, did that to me. The next day or the day before, I'm really not sure on that. I know it wasn't a part of that. Okay. And uh, anyway, where he did it was at that place on Clark Street, LaGrange. That's uh, mostly where he, his tags on his cars, that all goes back there if you don't want that address or something. And uh, after that, you know, I really don't know what happened to the guns. He said he got rid of them. I don't know where he did, where he, where he put them at. But, but after all that, you know, then I started running low on my money. And, uh, Do you know what James or he did with his money? He bought me cocaine to sell. He, cocaine. he bought coke with his money. What about James? That's all I thought you were talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. What about Mike? Mike, he paid off forfeitures from the courthouse and uh, he paid off uh, oh, Arthur Presley. He paid him $1,100 of that money that went there because Arthur. I was like part of his business. Arthur who? Greaseland. Greaseland? Yeah, I think I said G-R-E-S-L-I-N is how you spell it. I just seen his business card. And uh, anyways, you know, that's mostly where a lot of his money went. But the other portion, the main portion of it was when he took that eight-day trip. And that eight-day trip was finding out who he needs to see about rounding up the the right kind of dirt for that hydro, that special kind of hydro they were growing. Uh, how to clone that hydro plant, you know. And when you're plant. talking about hydro, Jim, you're, you're talking about a plant, a marijuana plant, marijuana. it's especially grown, it's more potent than the normal marijuana plant. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's down, it's more or less of a size to it instead of just grabbing the seed and throwing it in the dirt. Okay. But I just want to be clear of what you're talking about. All right, all right. I'm talking about marijuana when I say hydro. And, uh, <clears throat> see, that's his whole purpose in getting that money right there. Is what he said. See, he needed it to where he can work up the deal for the hydro with uh, Rick and his son. Rick was getting a thousand dollars off of each pack. Well, let's slow down a minute, okay? Let's make sure we're all on the same sheet of music. James mainly, as far as you know, bought most of his money from the Lee County robbery. He spent most of it on cocaine. Uh -huh. And he's got like a... Do you know anything else that he bought with that money? No, because actually he told me he put like three or four thousand of it up. Okay. And then, you know... And Mike, you think he paid some court stuff I with his? Is. I to the Russell County Courthouse? To the Russell County Courthouse. One of the judges was giving him a hard time about not paying one of the forfeitures that he had coming up that he had been paying. So he had to go and pay that forfeiture. A bond forfeiture? Yeah, bond forfeiture. Okay. And uh, he had to pay like four or five different forfeitures because that down bonding company is nothing but a front for whatever it is he's really got going on the side. Because when I stayed at his office, I realized that myself. And uh, because he never would do no fucking bonds. I never see him going out picking up nobody. He only picked up one person that I've ever known of since I've known a man for the fucking whole eight months or so that I've been out really. So tell me from there, tell me how you brought up a guy's name named Rick. How does who is he and how does he come to Rick is a state constable that hangs out mostly around Hertzboro area and uh Mike Ruth pays his gas bill, you know, 
shit like this when you drive around. And they talk about somebody here in the county giving them a big old hard time to want them in some bullshit. And, uh, anyways, he's paying his bills and shit like that to butter him up so he can get the deal with the hydro. Because, see, this hydro, it turns over every 90 days. There's a million dollars every 90 days being passed through. It might pass through where? where? Pass through in Alabama. There's somebody here. In the whole state. All right. There's somebody here who's growing it. And growing a quantity of it. That California, this is where it's all going, is California. That's why he made that trip to make the deal to where he made the agreements of when he grew it, that he'd be, they'd be able to take every bit that he gets for 2500 to 3000 a pound. And they said, as many as you bring, and we'll buy Rick's part in that, for get hooking him up with his son, was that he gets $1,000 off each one. Rick does. Uh, right. Rick is supposed yeah, to. You be said Rick had some, some kind of son that got arrested for 180 160. pounds of hydro. Where? Uh, in California. All right. And the people in California paid him 80000 know, just to sit out, shut up, take, keep rap for it. And anyway, they kicked his son out of California for two years. He's not allowed to even go in the state. The law did? Right. The law kicked him out. All right. And as far as I really know that Rick's son, I um, believe what he told me is that he's in Virginia. You know, that was their first trip they took was to go see his son when they took off. So Rick went with him right. for the last eight days. That's what Mike told me. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So he's gone for eight days. For eight solid after days. After the Lee yeah. County deal. Right. About uh, about four days after the Lee County deal, or three days after that, he's gone. He needed that to where he could go and at least make that connection. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so he gets all that done, but when he comes back from all that traveling he's done, done all the him paying for Rick going too, he's broke. And paying all the forfeitures and all that shit too. Okay. All right. And I don't lie, I was just about broke myself. I only had maybe a thousand dollars left, and uh, I just got fucked out of all my weed. Really, I was gonna try to make money, but I never had to do that shit again. And uh, <clears throat> anyways, he told me to get in the car. I said, "Let's go." So when was this? This is when he got back. Probably about the day after he got back. He got in the car and all that. And I was like, "Hey, he says, who do you know?" He said, "You got one more person." He said, "I need some more to finish up." He says, "I already got the." The engineering down on the uh, place that we're gonna build it, the hydro uh, laboratory at. He's like, I just need this last little bit that we're gonna get here to make it where I can build it, and they're gonna give me uh, 15 plans to start out, and then by then we'll, we'll clone them when they get older and we'll make more money. He's like, that's all I want. He said, oh, because he told me what it was and what he's working up to is a million dollars every nine days. No, that's actually what he really had worked on and got. But all he's even got the grow light, the little shit to plant them in and everything else. He's just waiting on that Rick's son to do one last thing for him. You know, he wouldn't ever tell me what that was. I think it's the it was the brain of plants. The little the little small hydrogen plants about like this. He's bringing that being up. And when he brought them over here, he said he's going to grow them a little bit and then clone them. Clone them and then grow them because if you when you clone them, that keeps all the seeds from growing up in your hydro, is what they were saying. And this makes it better. And they're charging like five thousand dollars a pound for this shit, really, is what they're telling me. And uh, anyways, he said that he wanted to go do one more thing so he can get that where he had enough to make it grow a little place that he was wanting to. And uh, I was telling him that I was broke. He's like, Look, he says, we're not going to do nobody. He says, all we're going to do is I'm going to walk up there. I'm going to show him these little pieces of paper saying that out. What it was, that's what I was telling you said earlier. Look on his computer. He said he kind of erased it out of his computer, but I don't believe it. But he made copies of Al Green when he made one of them uh, search warrants or some kind of piece of paper saying, you know, searching the place, you know, this, that, and the other. And uh, he blanked it all out, put State of Alabama versus Butch Valley, you know, and uh, put down there on the rest to, to search your house and have your contents in your safe, you know, volley dog. And he goes up and knocks on the dude's door because he went to Ranger Joe's to get a little patch that says H in you know, well, he's got a drug enforcement hat, he went and bought a long sleeve shirt, you know, dark blue, looks like a cop. 
Uh, so what was he wearing now? He was he was wearing like a drug enforcement you know, uniform. He was. Did it have drug agent on it? Yeah, you on know, his hat. Boom, had drug enforcement. What did it have on his shirt? Agent. agent. Just agent. Just agent right here. On a blue shirt. On a dark blue shirt. T-shirt. Uh, no button-up shirt. Long button-up shirt. shirt. Yeah. But I tell you what happened that man. I I got rid of that. I burned it. Okay. Well, that, that was one of the jobs. I don't know what it was. But uh, anyways, he walks up to the door, knocks on it. Guy answers the door. He walks inside, shows me the papers, you know. Now, where are you? I'm in the car. You sure? Oh, I'm fine. I swear to you. Because, see, I drove. The deal of it was, if he wanted me to drive, that way he can just get out on the passenger side instead of having to switch out whenever he gets out and he go to the driver's side. You know? And uh, I was like, all right. I was dry. I drove up in the yard. So why the, why, the, why the police bit, Jimmy? To get into the door. Okay, but I mean, he wanted to keep it because it was so in close to town and so neighbors were so close. He wanted to keep it low down and less noise as possible. So what he wanted, what he had told me, what he was going to do was go in there and he was going to get the man and then the kid. Whose idea was it to go to that house in the first place? Well, this goes back to the county deal when I mentioned about that guy there. I said, and he don't know this one in our own town here. He's the only other one I know. And uh, he's like, well, he said, let's go do this one up here. Oh, boy. And uh, by the time we did that one, he got to thinking about the other place that I told him. So you had told him about Butch and the guy in Lee County. Right. And he knew Terry. about it. Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Terry's his right. name. Right. right. Okay. So you told him about Butch and Terry. Right. I see it. Whenever I was telling them about it, they know like, each other. Right. As far know. as you know, they don't know each other. Right. Okay. All right. And see, as far as when I mentioned that guy's name, he's like, Bingo. He says, I know them. He says, They sell that shit out of the back of that lot, don't they? No, which one? Uh, Butch. Okay. And I'm like, Man, how did you know that? He's like, I got my little insides, you know. And there's somebody on the inside here in the county. He's telling them shit like, you know, who's being watching about Metro and all this. Because he's going to them people and telling them, telling them people that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I never could get in that good to find out who that person was. But it might have been Ray Hell, I don't know. And, uh, anyways, kind of rambled on there for a second. I forgot where the fuck I was. Well, he was up to the point that he was walking up to the house. Yeah. And, and what the plan was supposed to be. Right. The plan that was supposed to then, he's going to knock on the door. He made it to where it was about 9.30, where the kid should have been asleep. You know, that's whole intention was that the kid would be bad asleep. Don't fuck with him. You don't know nothing. You don't know that. He'll wake up his dad. It's just, you know, he's both gone with us. And um, get in there. Everything looked like it was going good. I always seen the man standing there. And um, he comes out with a man handcuffed, throws him in the car. Front of back. In the back, in the back. Handcuffed in the front, in the back. Oh, handcuffed in his back. In the back. Yeah. Hands behind him. Right, hands behind him. Handcuffed him down, you know, put him in the car. <sighs> Goes back inside. You know, he wasn't supposed to go back inside. And it was when he soon as he put him in, he closed the door and walked right back in there without telling me I'll be back or not, you know. Comes back out. What the fuck are the kid cuffed, or is he just no, walking? He's just walking in. And you know, I'm like, oh, shit. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, he was in the living room. You know, the kid wasn't in the living room, man. Okay, what was he wearing? The kid. Uh, I don't know. The kid was wearing a gray shirt. I don't know. I'm to say it's like a gray looking shirt. Called long sleeve. I know he wants to show you. I really can't tell him about the clothes. Okay. What about the pants? I just know he had some on. <laughs> okay. You know, I really, I didn't pay attention to what they were wearing. Okay. And uh, cause I was still tripping out. He's got a fucking kid with us. And um, he goes out there to the 431. That's the part that y'all know about and shit. So y'all drive out there. Right. I drive out there. Get out of the car. Me, you know, me and Michael, he talks first when we get out of the car. We leave him in the back seat still. 
and he was telling me about he's like, look, he said, if I had to bring the kid to you, all he dog, he's like he was he was in the living room, had no choice, you know. Uh, he's like, well, he says, let's get the man out and tell him if he don't get us the money at the house, that we just do the kid right here, right now, right out here in the socks. He gets the man out, walks him away from the car.